Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so um, this is the other video. I did the where are you going, where have you been um, review interpretation first. And now I'm going to talk about everything else that we have to talk about. Um, hopefully you guys appreciate, you know, more videos over lengthier videos. I don't know. You'll have to tell me. Um, otherwise, that video would have been probably at least an hour. Um, so we'll see. I know that we would be in class that long anyway, but it doesn't matter. I digress. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see what we're going to talk about because I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> so we did, where are you going? Where have you been? Um, I reviewed it and now, oh yes. So you do have a discussion post that's open um, to discuss this story either after you watch my interpretation or after you watch the clip smooth talk. Um, it doesn't matter whatever questions you have or whatever thoughts maybe you want to put down, you know, like pen to paper, put it there in the discussion post. The discussion post is a great discussion. So please make sure that you do it. Um, the other thing that we're going to go over now is the elements of fiction. And I have to find it. Sorry, there it is. Okay. So the elements of fiction. Now, there are, if I can remember, I believe five elements of fiction. Yes. No, I'm sorry. Six. There are six elements. Um, so I apologize. This document is available to you on Canvas, um, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, right here. There with me, please. Mm -hmm. Elements of fiction. Okay. So the first one, character. So now these, this is important to know. These elements of fiction are important to know for when you go to do your reader's response, which I will get to after this. Okay. So the character. This is also typically the order that we kind of do things when we're writing a story. Okay, so character, we need a backstory. We need to know what they look like. We have to understand their, their character arc. How are they going to develop over the course of the story? Okay, there is a lot that we have to take into consideration when we have characters, okay? Um, the emotional, the mental condition, as we learn from, you know, <laughs> this past story, and even arose for Emily that mentality is, is pretty important. Um, you know, Rose for Emily, they didn't have, depression wasn't a thing. It wasn't a term yet. It wasn't a medical condition. Um, you know, <laughs> so they never would have been able to diagnose Emily. Um, Arnold Friend having some issues, they would have been able to diagnose. However, we're only given a glimpse into his uh, insanity, I guess. I don't know how you want to put it. Okay. So they help, the characters are really the drivers to tell the tale. Okay. We have, of course, we have the narrator who really drives it home for us and fills in some blanks, but without the interaction of characters to see how they manipulate, how they um, maneuver, how they talk, what they say, we can't really get much from a story without there being characters in it. Okay. So you know, the idea of Arnold Friend is that he's not supposed to feel like a real person, okay, because of the possible interpretation that it's a dream. So with that in mind, how do we make him seem a little crazier than a normal person to make us think that maybe this isn't real, okay? Um, and then, of course, their character arc, they change, they grow, how, how so? If the characters are flat, we as readers would have trouble emphasizing with them. Um, a flat character is a character that starts out one way and ends that same exact way. There is no change between that character. A round character is one that goes full circle, essentially, or, you know, begins that change. He might not come all the way back to where he started, but he does have a change. Okay, so it's a round character. All right, then the second one is plot. Obviously, this is the whole point of the story would be the plot, what's happening. So, um, I also write here that a lot of people will put plot as first because most of the times we think of a story before we think of the people in the story when it's in our heads. Um, but the characters are really who helps to drive the plot. You can't have one without the other. Um, so plot is the blueprint, okay? So the exposition, the introduction, we started with her name was Connie in this most recent one. Okay, this is what we've learned throughout all of our years in school rising action, climax, falling action, um, 
and of course the resolution. So the resolution for our story was that we don't really know what happened to Cotty. <laughs> um, I do very briefly go over this only because you guys can read. I know I've said it before. I'll continue to say it. I don't need to read every word off this paper for you. You do know how to read. <laughs> um, so you can write in your reader's response, you know, like how that climax, that turning point of where are you going, where have you been, or Rose for Emily, or a good man is hard to find. How did that make you feel? Okay, because that's where we're going to have the most emotional interaction with the story. Um, and then, of course, the falling action when things start to kind of wind down, that tension's gone, everything kind of, the dust starts to settle. Okay, and then, of course, the resolution, the dust has settled, this is where we're at. All right. Um, our third element is setting. You can have a storyline, you can have your characters, but sometimes those things also depend on where do we put them or things that happen in the story can depend on where do we place these people physically. Um, so where are you going? Where, we, where have you been? We don't really get a setting. We are in Jackson, Mississippi. In, I'm sorry, Jefferson, Mississippi in A Rose for Emily. It's a fictional place. So but we also know that Mississippi is real, so we have an idea of where it's taking place, okay? Um, and then the next story that you guys are going to read, A Good Man is Hard to Find, starts in Georgia and goes to Florida, okay? So we have a, again, we have a general idea of how this story is kind of evolving based on its setting, okay? Um, let's see. The setting kind of acts like a character. You, you almost need it to drive that point home. Um, you know, we wouldn't have a high powered CEO or high powered lawyer in, I don't know, uh, East Bumble, Tennessee, right? Like it wouldn't, it, that character wouldn't fit that place. Um, think of the movie Sweet Home Alabama. I don't remember her name because I've only seen the movie like one time. Um, my husband would know. But anyway, like Reese Witherspoon's character is well placed when she's in the city and very out of place when she goes back home to Alabama. So think of how setting has something to do with it as well. Okay, it's it's, it's like its own character. Um, you know what? It what do characters have to learn to survive in their their setting? What tools do they have? Norms, um, possible presumptions. Okay, so these are it's just something to think about. Um, historical culture okay so that's something usually big when you have a setting because your setting is also your time setting it's not just a physical place um and that's something that we saw much more with a rose for emily less of where are you going where have you been and we'll see it a little bit with a good man is hard to find okay then of course point of view so rose for emily we start out with the point of view being from uh the townspeople as a whole which is very interesting very different and then we have third person omniscient um, for where are you going, where have you been? And that's going to be essentially the same for a good man is hard to find. Okay, think of the feeling that the author is trying to get at, you know, if they kind of, Rose for Emily made us part of the town. It made us part of seeing what was happening. But then good man is hard to find and where are you going, where have you been? Make us as observers that we're just passers-by Okay, it's like we're watching a movie. We're not really interacting. We're just observing. Okay, so we're, we're like a two-way mirror here. Um, let's keep going. The point of view allows how much you want the reader to see as well. So, you know, with Rose for Emily, they wanted us to see a lot, a lot of the goings-on of the town versus keeping certain things secret but we also were kept out of Miss Emily's life for the most part. We were also shunned out of that house. So it's just something to, you know, keep in the back of your mind. And then of course there's theme. Element number five, theme. It's what your story's really about. Okay, so like, what was this story really about? What was, where are you going, where have you been really about? What was Rose for Emily really about? Probably tradition and breaking it. Um, you know, uh, a lot of stories have morals, so maybe that's where we're going for, is what it's really about, is what's the moral of this story. Um, uh, so it just, you know, theme carries over, however, it's harder, 
pieces of fiction can be harder to carry over that theme because it is fake. It's not a real piece of work. Um, and that's also why it's so low on the totem pole of the order of the elements of fiction. Okay, that's why it's number five. And then there's set, uh, number six is style, okay? Your voice, your sense of writing. Everybody has one, okay? Um, this is something that most writers, myself, you all included, get in trouble for, okay? This is where it's, I hear your voice in your paper, but it's a research paper and you need to be unbiased. This is where we get in that, that not hot water, but where we're kind of like, I don't know how to eliminate my voice from it. Or how do I still state my opinion without putting myself into it? Okay, so this is that trickier area. Um, this comes over time. This is not an easily achievable thing. Don't think it is. Uh, it is my job, not yours, to tell you how to either eliminate your voice completely or how to manipulate your voice in there without it sounding like it's you, if that makes sense. Okay, so how do we do this? We read a lot, we write a lot, and we listen. That's it. Um, I know it seems like a lot, it really does. Um, tone, okay, so we know that there are certain things that we can say that if we emphasize each word and say it different, it's gonna come out differently, we're gonna hear it differently, okay? I told you to get the cat. Well, um, what was the one? Uh, I didn't say we should murder him, okay? I didn't say we should murder him. I didn't say we should murder him. I didn't say we should murder him. Okay, see how, so the meaning changes depending on the emphasis, okay? So that's where, that's how style comes into play with tone, okay? Um, but that's essentially what style is. So the next thing I want to look at with you guys is your reader response. Okay, I'm just gonna hop on over to that. So you're going to be doing a reader response on one of the three stories that you have now, as of next week, have read. Okay. So a rose for Emily. Where are you going? Where have you been? We're going to be in this hard time. These are very easy. Two to three pages. First, you know, first person. So you can say I, me, we, you, whatever. It is very informal. That doesn't mean that I want to see some text writing. <laughs> okay. Do not write LOL or JK or AF. Okay, write these things out, please. We are, we are writers. Regardless of what we're writing, we're still writing it. Um, so I want you to address these essential questions. How does the re reading make you feel? Okay, what are your thoughts upon completing the reading? What's something that stood out to you? Also think of, you know, what would you ask the author if you could talk to them? Um, what questions do you have about the piece? Okay, so something like that. Um, it's gonna be a minimum of two to three pages, double spaced, one inch margins on all sides, 12 point times in Roman font. And then if you are quoting, if you're quoting the text, then you need to cite it, okay? That's why we did MLA so early, because now you know how to properly cite, okay? So if you need to refer back to that, it's obviously at your disposal, okay? Um, you are being graded on your analysis, your context, organization, and your writing. So let's just go over these real fast. Analysis, I do want you to provide an analysis of the reading. So think of a character. Okay, um, let's think Miss Emily. Why did she act that way? Okay, or Arnold Friend, why does he act that way? Or we're going to have the misfit in A Good Man is Hard to Find. Why do these characters act the way they do? Okay, analyze them. Context simply means that you are using a quote or that you are putting a quote or two or three or however many into the story, that you are quoting your story or citing your story, organization, that it flows, we know this. And then of course, writing mechanics and citations, you are citing correctly, you have a proper work cited page. Um, your grammar is pretty, you know, on the up and up. Uh, and I think that's, I think that's it. Okay, two to three pages, they're not hard, I promise. They're really not. Don't overthink it. Okay. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's it. Okay, so nice and short and sweet. And uh, I look forward to reading your responses next week. Hopefully you guys didn't hate me too much for this story that you just had to read. 
and hopefully you won't hate me too much for the next one, <laughs> but we shall see. Um, all right. Bye guys. Have a good rest of your day.